So today I'm interviewing Nan McKay. Very excited about this interview. Nan is president of the board of directors of Nan McKay and Associates, a corporation she founded in 1980, which now has 4,000 employees with offices in 10 cities. Very impressive. Nan is also CEO and founder of Nan McKay Connects LLC, a media and consulting company with a podcast and YouTube channel, Trailblazers Impact Interviews, and I'm excited to see mine when it comes out, uh, featuring ordinary women with extraordinary stories. And this is really uh, very, this is new. I hadn't heard about this yet. So her book, Gold in the Golden Years, How to Launch a Business You Love to Make Your Own Gold, focusing on women over 50, yay, who want to start or grow a business, is included in the Gold in the Golden Years series, along with a webinar and a course. Nan McKay was selected as 2019 California Woman Business Owner of the Year, and has two buildings named after her. <laughs> that is so cool. Welcome to the show, Nan. Thank you so much, Leslie, and it's great to be here. Such a pleasure. Now, tell us about um, Nan McKay and Associates, the company you founded in 1980 uh, and has have grown so successfully. Now, who does a company serve? And, and, and a few nuggets, nuggets on how you were able to grow it to be such a successful company would be great. Well, Nan McKay and Associates, which we refer to as NMA, so it isn't quite as much to say, right. serves the housing and community development community. So that means it's cities and counties and states that would employ us. NMA has over 4,000 employees, but we work in four primary areas. One is agency management. That's when a housing authority privatizes their operations. Then we come in with multi-staff members. Some of them, some of our clients have 47,000 units, for instance, and we take over their operations. We also do consulting, we do disaster operations, and we do training. So we're the largest provider of these services together in the country. But uh, I have to tell you, it wasn't always like this. No. I started Navicate and Associates in 1980 in the basement of my house. Oh, man. I was on the phone scheduling hotels and meals, typically in my nightgown at 5 a.m. <laughs> and didn't get dressed until later in the day, but they couldn't see me, so why not? <laughs> uh, I wrote courses, I wrote books, I wrote training materials, and the big thing was I had to travel in order to do all this. So mm -hmm. I traveled about 40 weeks a year for about 30 years. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, that's a lot of travel. I missed a lot of birthdays and school events. And yeah. my husband, Jim, had to learn to cook something other than eggs and omelets. <laughs> <laughs> but we survived and it's still going today. The, yeah. I, I was thinking back on the other day on, gosh, what was it like back in 1980? And I remember when I started, we typed out 1,000 labels every time we did a mailing. Now, get this, on a Selectric typewriter. Now, a lot of people <laughs> will say, what in the heck is that? But that was what we had to do. Uh, yeah. We did the marketing flyers and the letters on that same typewriter because personal computers were really brand new back at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. The first personal computer, I looked this up just to check it out. Mm -hmm came out in 1976, and this oh. was 1980. So we're talking four years, and you know, it's not like a brand new business, I'm gonna run out and buy a computer because no. it's a lot of money back at that point, thousands of dollars. Yeah, so, and they didn't do a heck of a lot either. Like they didn't have the processing power that we have today. Oh, heavens no. No. So a relative got me an employee discount that he could get on an Apple II computer. Oh. But back then we had no internet, no yeah. Microsoft Windows, no Word, no PowerPoint, no cell phones, no projectors even. So with this finally getting this computer, 
we were finally able to print our labels and that was huge. Right. Huge. So I traveled with, to do these seminars with 10 big pre-written flip charts on the plane until transparencies were finally invented. Oh my goodness. Yep. And then laptops were invented because they weren't invented either. And then we finally went to this glorious thing that we still have today called PowerPoint. <laughs> that made a difference. So I would say I would, I would characterize those early days as really a, a learning curve with a lot of mistakes along the way. But we made yeah. it. Yeah, that is a very interesting niche to have gotten into. How did you even recognize that as a niche that you wanted to serve? Well, that's an interesting question because I had worked for housing authorities for 17 years prior to that. Okay. And back in the 1970s, there were very few women that were housing authority directors. Uh -huh. But I, I started in 1963 as a secretary needing a job. Okay. And no other reason. I didn't know what a housing authority was. Right. And then just work my way up through all these years to finally become executive director. And I would think by the back in the, about the late seventies, I was probably one of five to ten women executive directors in the whole country. Oh my man! So did you? Did you? I mean, you must have stories around hurdles that you encountered both in your corporate, but also launching your business. Because really, when there's only five to 10 of you, I can't even imagine what the atmosphere would have been like. So can you tell us about any obstacles that you faced or hurdles <laughs> that you jumped over? Or <laughs> oh, there were a few. Choose uh, the top three. Or <laughs> yeah. I think, um, well, back in the 1980s, I was as starting as a woman in business. That was really an anomaly, just like it was to be an executive director of a housing authority. And one of the things that when I started the business, obviously I needed a credit card in the business name. I couldn't even get a credit card for the business in my name. So my husband had to sign for me. No. And then, you know, when I called somebody on the phone, they either thought my name was Dan instead of Nan. I don't think I have a very low voice. Right. Uh, or they thought maybe I was just someone's secretary. So right. it was an attitude about what are you doing in business? Now, put this in context. I was 38. I had two kids, eight and 10, and a husband who had just left his full-time job to do real estate. Ah! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> Panic. Yeah. So I cashed, you know, big question is where, where does the money come from? Because money is always an issue when you start a business. Yeah. So I cashed out my $10,000 pension plan okay. and I jumped in. Wow. That's brave. Well, Brave or another word. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, on that on that question, it really does take bravery to be an entrepreneur to jump in like that with two feet. Um, and so, do you? To what do do you owe your bravery, or is there somebody who inspired you along the way? Well, I don't know. As as I said, whether you call it bravery or guts or foolhardiness, yeah. Or, uh, I think. The thing that personally makes a difference as an entrepreneur and made a difference certainly to me is, I don't know if you've ever heard of the DISC profile, but I am a high D on the DISC profile, which means I'm very task oriented and I can push my way through probably about anything. <laughs> In fact, I have to constantly temper that high D by bringing my high I in to soften the me the message a little bit and talk my way through the obstacle rather than just push, pushing my way through. Mm -hmm. But I think the bottom line is um, when you're an entrepreneur and you're responsible for everything, you just have to put your head down and keep swinging. Yeah. If, you, if you ask who was the my 
the person that maybe influenced this most. You know, I didn't realize this at the time, which is interesting. You know, you look back and you, you start realizing things that you had really no idea back at the time. But we had a growing up situation where my dad was killed in a car accident when I was 11. Oh, and we thought we had a lot of money and turned mm -hmm. out that we did not. He had gambled and he owed everyone in a little town of 3000 people. Mm. So my mother had to sell the big house and buy another house and go to work. And she started a mannequin business, huh. which means that store dummies in essence. Yeah. So she got a hearse and she took the hearse over to the various stores, department stores, picked up the mannequins and brought them back in the hearse because it was you know, big enough to have a body. So therefore yeah. it can fit great. Very clever. <laughs> them up. Yes. And she, we had a detached garage. So she opened the door. She hung them upside down in the, in the garage and spray painted the dummies. Okay. While people would go by and they would glance over and go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> many, many near accidents. <laughs> I even imagine the hearse filled with the the mannequins would have been quite a sight to see as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What an amazing woman. She was. And oh, I don't yeah. know that I ever gave her full credit for it. You know, again, when you look back and you can't do anything about something because somebody's died. Uh, I don't think I ever gave her full credit. She always wanted me not to work. Because, you know, she always wanted me to have the luxury of staying at home. I didn't want that. So we had some conflict throughout our life about that kind of thing. But I certainly recognize she was a role model from day one. Hmm. Well, thank you for that. Now, when did you launch Nan McKay Connects? This is your next business. And who do you serve with this business and, and why? Well, Nan McKay Connects was... Uh, a business that I just started because I had done so many other things that were not really critical. Like when you retire, I think part of what you go through is what should I do? Oh gosh, I don't have to do anything. So you sit with your coffee cup for about two weeks. And if you're a high powered kind of person oh, uh, you get bored fast and then yeah. you volunteer and then you go through all that and then you play golf and you go through all that and really it's uh it gets to the point where you say i want to do something much more important oh. now I, I had started about six businesses when i go back through my career and I have always been militant, really almost militant about women's rights. Hmm. And when I thought about what else could I do with my life, I decided to find a way to feature women's achievements. Hmm. So I started a podcast called Trailblazers Impact. And that focus was interviewing women who had made a difference in empowering themselves and other women in life. Hmm. And I go through all kinds of people from all different walks of life, whether they are an activist or whether they're a, an entrepreneur or whether they're a health professional or an educator. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is that they have made a difference to someone else. Mm -hmm. And is that how you define a trailblazer? Well, I, I would define a trailblazer, I think, as really an ordinary person who has blazed a trail through hardships, probably making it easier and better for the next person. Mm -hmm. That's what it is to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot in common with alpha woman because I, I also sort of see an alpha woman actually as being that person as well and supporting her sisters and help, uh, helping uplift her sisters as well for the good of all. For the good of all. Yeah, yeah. So... What have been your most significant challenges as an entrepreneur? I mean, you've had a very long career, so I know that that's a very big question, but if there were two or three that you could point to um, that we could learn from, that would be, uh, you know, really fantastic. 
Well, when I think about it, what is not a challenge as an entrepreneur, that list is probably shorter. <laughs> good point, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good I point. I think entrepreneurs typically like to take on challenges, mm -hmm. but there are some that I would say are daunting. And I think the most daunting ones probably revolve around money. Mm -hmm. I remember I had one time when I thought I might not make it. Uh, not as a person, but as a business, I right. finally hired a general manager. And that's really difficult just to have the money, get the, get the business revenue coming in to a point where you can hire that general manager. Very hard. Mm -hmm. But I think I just, again, I look back at myself and say, what I always look at myself, what could you have done better? What did you do wrong? And is, is this something that's your fault? And I think my, my liability there is that I didn't put enough checkpoints in place. Hmm. One morning, she and our contract accountant told me that we were deeply in debt and we owed a lot of people. And I'm like, shocked. Yeah. And I wondered how could that have happened? Because it appeared on reports that checks had been written to people. Well, they had but believe it or not, they were never mailed and they were in a file drawer because somehow we didn't have the revenue to support them. So it was a very scary time. Mm. I worked my way out of it, but I would say that looking back is the biggest challenge that I ever had. Mm -hmm. And how did you keep yourself on track um, from a mental health perspective and maybe a self-care perspective during that really stressful time? <laughs> like that must have been crazy stressful. <laughs> yeah, but, but I kind of laugh about that kind of question because the yeah. the real response, the honest response is I probably don't. Right. I try to get enough sleep, but I do when something like that is weighing on me. I'm up in the middle of the night. I'm writing lists of things that I need to do, mm. etc. So I'm. I, I think for the most part, uh, I just have a, a good outlook on life. I'm really optimistic okay. and I always think, all right, I can do this. You know, yeah. that's high D stuff. I will work my way out of this. I can find my way out. And I just have the determination to say, I will do this regardless of what it takes. Hmm. Now, so health wise, um, no, I probably don't really eat as well because I'm always on a diet. Every time I turn around, I find a new diet, to be honest. <laughs> and mentally, um, I just power through it, I guess, is the answer and try to get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what are you most proud of with regards to your career? Again, this very long career, a lot of peaks, I'm sure. Um, but well, what are you most proud of? I, I don't. I don't like the word proud because uh, in a sense that is too much ego for me, but I can rephrase it to say, what am I most happy about? And I think the thing I'm most happy about that I've made the biggest impact in, and that's happy to me, is having worked with low-income families throughout really my whole government career, I know how difficult life can be. Mm. especially for single women yeah. trying to raise children mm. on very little money. Yeah. So what I'm happiest about in my government career is being able to put a roof over their heads. To me, that mm. was, and in my company, my mission was to teach housing authority employees how to do their job fair, right, and with mm. compassion and respect for both families and elderly. Mm. So in the business, we helped the people who helped the people. And mm. we never forgot who our ultimate client is at that point. Mm. That's beautiful. It's true. Mm. And so, so you've been... Um, with NAMA K Connects, it's been a couple years now that since you've launched that business. And of course, we've been through a global pandemic. <laughs> so how did uh, how has the past year and a half with, with COVID impacted your business, if at all? 
Well, first of all, we let's talk about both businesses because I yeah. have the two hats. Yeah. Uh, NMA was actually considered an essential service. So oh. we never stopped with NMA. Right. Uh, we worked remotely and we expanded our services so that housing authorities could get help with their recertifications, their interviews with the family and their ongoing uh, recalculation of the rents. So we gave, we worked with them having, if they didn't have an automated portal, then we worked with them to give a service for that. So to get the rest of them through as well. Mm-hmm. For Namake Connects, I just kept working, but I did it all remotely, like pretty much everybody else. Wow. Uh, I have to tell you though, I did break down and get a bread maker. <laughs> you got into and the bread thing. So did I. <laughs> I, I learned about baguette. I mean, what am I doing making baguette? It takes 12 hours. <laughs> well, other than that, I really did. You know, it was just something that I felt I had to stay home yeah. and protect both my husband and me. Right. And we weathered through it. So far. You, right. Well, you look very healthy. You look fabulous. I am. I am. And do you think it um, will change the way that you create content and, 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 and market content, produce it uh, in the future? I used to go to conferences, big conferences, and oh. to women through those conferences. I would find NABO and Enterprising Women and Women's Venture Summits and things like that. Oh. And I think that's how I got started finding women who have done some spectacular things, uh-huh. but just out as ordinary people so i i don't go to those conferences right now but i generally do them over zoom and i pick out who i think really might fit the bill as a trailblazer and contact them typically Mm -hmm. through linkedin but other than and i may go back out and do some conferences again uh particularly national international level i don't you know i traveled all my life so i don't care about travel it's no big deal but uh I don't think otherwise it changes. What has changed more for me is that I've just been constantly learning because all of the apps that you have to know how to do and use remotely in order to promote your podcast from a marketing point of view, it's huge. Yeah. Big learning curve. So I would say that's what I've worked on. I am taking, I take classes all week long. I probably have about five classes going right now. Mm -hmm. What kind of classes is on content creation, production, marketing? All of the above, Uh all of the above. One of the things that I have joined is a a group called Powerful Professionals, which is very expensive, but it has probably made more difference in my business than anything else. I interviewed Kim Walsh Phillips, who is head of that and gave her a lot of kudos at the time because I had four podcasts going and four YouTube channels going and I couldn't concentrate on anything. So I wound down three of each on both Mm -hmm. sides and I'm just focusing now on Trailblazers Impact. And that is making a big business, a a big uh, impact on really how much I'm able to accomplish with one thing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and, and then also talking about um, how you're serving your the female audience over 50. And I'm really intrigued by that, because I think that there, there's really likely no better time in history to be a woman over 50. Um, we, we, th- there, are, there are so many more opportunities. And I think there's a, a zeitgeist in the air that's, you know, talking about how you, we're realizing that our lives aren't over just because we're over the age of 55 years old. In fact, it's in many ways just beginning. So what are your thoughts on this personally and professionally? And I'd love to hear about, you know, your priorities in the coming years, especially with regards to your business. Well, here's my militant side coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do believe there is a revolution ah. in the country today. And I characterize it as we have a new breed of cat in the neighborhood. And that breed of cat reflects itself in career women who have had control over their life. They have been working most of their life, if not all. 
and they are not about to give up what they have gained so far. Mm. So we're talking about women over 50 who have fought ageism and sexism and racism. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, I'm not done. Don't try to put me in a box because I'm not going. I'm viable and by darn it, I'll prove it. Mm -hmm. So as women age, I've been studying this and it seems like I would pick four major things that have come to the forefront for, for women today. One is they want to continue a productive life. In other words, they don't want to just sit back and do that. I shouldn't just say golf, but I mean, you know, sports yeah. or doing their coffee every day. There's a lot of people out there that say, uh-uh, you know, I want to be productive. I want to make a difference. Two is a sense of accomplishment. I want to feel like I made a difference and accomplished something. Three is physical adequacy. And I say adequacy because when you get older, I mean, I've had knee replacement, I've had back surgery, you know, that kind of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And so if the point is get over it, get past it, keep on going. Right. That's what I mean by physical adequacy. Uh It is not going to be perfect. I'm not great for getting out there and doing my exercise every day like I know I should. <laughs> but the reality is I that's I, I want to do enough to be able to get by and take care of myself enough so that I can get out there and do that. Uh-huh. And I think one fourth thing, and that to me is maybe one of the most important ones, or at least the one that I am focusing on, and that is I think women want to have ongoing income during retirement. If if they're going to retire, then they're going to say, either I'm going to refire and do something else that I choose to do that fits my own passion, or they may say, I'm going to retire, but I want to travel, or I want to do something that is me, Hmm. that I have been wanting to do for a long time. Hmm. So... I think women have to start asking themselves, if not now, when? Right. You know, we know we're not going to get any younger. (laughs) That 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 doesn't happen. (laughs) And we know our time on earth is limited. Right. And if we're going to do something to make a difference, we had better get started now. Yeah. We do not have the luxury of time. Mm. And as you get older, the time gets shorter and shorter. So my my saying is don't wait because tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day until the end of time. And it keeps on going. Mm. So women need to take action now. Do whatever it is that you want and you need to do because the time is going to run out. So my own personal priorities is they they are, and I guess they've always revolved around work. I'm happy if I'm working. My passion is to help women realize their dreams and thrive. And if they want to just, you know, have their cup of coffee every day or do what they want to do, I say, fine, do it. No problem. Mm-hmm. But if you want to do something else, then let's figure it out and let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's fantastic. And what characteristics do you believe are needed to be a successful entrepreneur as a mature woman? <laughs> I'll say mature I woman. Because I love that word, but. Tour <laughs> because I'm always asking myself, oh, what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> yeah, I well, I think it. Frances Gorman, she I love her. She coined the term um elderess. Oh, as an elderess. <laughs> I don't even know if I like that term because I still think I'm about 45, 50. <laughs> oh, maybe 55, but that's about it. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah. Okay. Maturity gonna, is relative, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pick um five. Okay. Uh, I would say determined. Okay. Optimistic. Mm. Flexible, because you never know what's coming at you. Curious. That That's helps important. me on the interviewing because I am very curious about what. Tell me about your life. Yeah. And I think the last thing I would say is tenacious. Mm -hmm. You cannot give up, even though it seems like that's the best thing to do. Mm. Uh, think again, maybe not. Oh. And look at it again, go back over and say, if you're determined and you're optimistic and you're flexible and you're curious, then you can be tenacious. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very good as well. And now, can you give alpha women entrepreneurs that are interested in launching a business two or three actionable insights to take away? Okay. Well, one is I have a free gift for your listeners. Oh. If they go to trailblazersimpact.com, that's trailblazers, plural, impact.com, forward slash 10 tips, then they can download a free e-workbook. Mm. And that will help you start to discover if you're ready to pivot to be an entrepreneur. Aha. Because not everybody is. No. So this will help you explore. Number two, I think make a list of everything that you are spending right now. Hmm. Now, cross out, uh, but cross it out rather lightly so that you can put it back in if you need to. The ones that you could do without. We all have things we spend money on. We think, oh, why did I sign up for that? Why did I do that? Yes. Well, take that times the, the take that total times 12. Hmm. And then ask yourself, do you have enough savings or maybe a partner that could fund it or something to get you by for a year for at least your personal expenses? Mm -hmm. But you're going to have business expenses. We know that. But you want your personal expenses covered first. Mm -hmm. I think the third thing is uh, consider us what I call a side hustle. Uh, something that is not your primary business if you're still working and or an online business. Now, two, two things about that. A side hustle is going to ease you into it. That That's why I suggest that. But maybe you need to put, you go full bore and you'll know soon. Mm -hmm. Online business is probably one of the best things to get into today. Why? Because it's faster and it's cheaper to get up and running. That's mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. I think the, the last thing is, and it's the it's the bane of my existence, and I think it's a bane of a lot of people's existence. Yes. And that is, but it's necessary evil. Become very familiar with at least one social media platform. Ah, social media. Because yes. It's a fact of life. It is indeed, indeed. And just a, a question on that. Do you have a preferred social media platform? I have two. Uh, mm. One is Facebook. And I, I like that because I've got a lot of women and a lot of groups in that area that are entrepreneurial focused. Mm -hmm. And the second one is LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is a more business. So I have on my housing side of me, that's where I have a lot of followers or a lot of, I don't know, say followers, friends or whatever you call them. That makes like, sense. Yeah. Um, and so that's necessary too. So I'm trying to be good at both of those. Mm. Uh, I know there's things like clubhouse that are coming up fast Yeah, and I've got to get into that. And I will do it probably oh, in no. the future, but yeah. it, it, I get more trepidation there because you, you are out there on Clubhouse. 
first. Yes, I know. I've been thinking the same thing. It's like, how do I, I listen, I get in there, I listen, I join rooms and, you know, sometimes I go up on stage and, 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 and then I'm, and the reality is though, it takes a lot of effort and time to do it well. So it's yet another social media platform. You have to have a strategy. Uh, you have to put it in place and then execute it. So it's like, oh my goodness. Okay. That's my fifth social media platform that I'm engaging on. That's a lot. <laughs> so, and between classes and social media, gosh, you, you do know? Yeah. To do your work <laughs> exactly so i like your suggestion of just choosing two that's a wow. great idea great idea now i will put in the show notes the link to that wonderful um uh, downloadable list that's wonderful thank you so much for offering that to our our listeners really appreciate it um now what's next for nan mckay connects what's coming up this year well i'm really excited about what i'm calling my trilogy uh, it is a book about to come out. It's at the publisher. Wow. It is a free webinar right. and it's a course and it's right. all focused on helping women over 50 pivot to launch a business that they're passionate about mm. to make their own gold. Mm. So, what I would suggest to people is if you sign up on our website, which is trailblazersimpact.com, mm -hmm. then we can keep you informed about what's available and what's coming. Mm -hmm. and I would say the other thing I'm thinking about is I'm probably going to do more consulting with people who want to start or grow a business, but we'll see. I'm thinking about doing another whole trilogy on podcast, what, how to do a podcast. So I'm, I'm always got about 45 irons in the fire. You're time. a creator. Look at you. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Nan, it's been such a pleasure to have this interview today to learn more about you and your incredible career. Well, thank you. I am hoping that uh, if anybody wants to contact me, you can just do it at nan at nanmckayconnects.com. And I really would like feedback. I would like to oh, hear cool. what people think about our podcasts. And we also have a YouTube channel. Right. And I really hope that people will explore their options with me by the book, the webinar, the course, and everything's on my website. Well, I will absolutely put to make sure that, that that link is in the show notes so it's easy to find you. And yeah. also, as I mentioned, I'm really excited because you interviewed me uh, for your for the, uh, the for the Trailblazer series. So I'm very excited that we'll make sure that we promote that to our audience as well. I believe it's coming out in the end of uh, November. So um, I think it's in November or maybe it's the end of October. Oh, I think it's sooner than that. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah, it's coming up soon. And I should have the exact date. I don't have the exact date, but I will get it for you and you can give it to your all of your followers. Yes. And so they'll have a real experience and uh, figure out more, you know, find out more about what Namake Connects is up to. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Well, Leslie, thank you. You know, it's been a lot of fun sharing with you and your audience, but I think you're doing some wonderful things and it's thank important you. for all of us out there to do what we can to empower women. It yeah, is yeah. our time and we need to take it. Agreed. And I wish you a great ride along the journey as well. Thank you, Nan. Well, I'm sure that we'll be, uh, our paths will be following and intersecting along this journey. So thank you so much. Thank you.